Hi everyone, we're the Muskrat Group and welcome to our Looking Back, Looking Forward presentation. My name is Nancy and I'm here with Rachel, Tina, and Nathan. Just before we begin, I want to give a land acknowledgement. So I would like to acknowledge the First Nations people as the traditional owners of the land where I'm residing today in New Farm, Brisbane. I recognize the country north and south of the Brisbane River as the home of both the Turrbal and Yugara nations. I pay deep respects to all elders past, present, and future. And now I'll hand it over to Tina. Hi, so to begin with, looking back, how can we engage in good ways and grow our understanding? Uh, so we had the following goals at the beginning of our Indigenous education course. Learning more about what the term Indigenous education entails, discovering tangible ways in which we can incorporate Indigenous ways of knowing and teaching into our classrooms in all areas of curriculum. We had the desire to incorporate Indigenous teachings, but we wanted to know more about how to do so in a purposeful and meaningful way. We wanted to increase our knowledge of Indigenous history, relations, and reconciliation efforts, and finally, learn strategies for building relationships with Indigenous communities. Overall, we wanted to learn more about our responsibilities as educators and how we can productively contribute to decolonizing education, making it a safe and welcoming space for our Indigenous students. We agreed that we are comfortable discussing Indigenous issues, but ensure that our approach and attitude was to be open-minded and respectful of differing opinions, ensure that we are leaning in to what others have to contribute, recognizing that everyone is at a different place with their engagement in Indigenous education and their knowledge of Indigenous issues. Some of us have worked and have more experience with Indigenous communities compared to others, acknowledging our own privilege and positionality, and remembering that unpacking topics such as colonization in residential schools is a lifelong process. Throughout the last eight weeks, we have gathered that Indigenous education is so much more than what can be covered in just one course. We have learned through group discussions, individual reflection, and the course readings, and our knowledge has been supplemented by our observations of Indigenous education efforts in Australia. We believe that the most important thing we have learned while participating in Indigenous education is keeping an open relationship with our students, allowing ourselves to continue to learn and incorporate authentic Indigenous education into our classroom and allowing our students a space to grow. This is supported by the Toulouse article, which explores the importance of teachers fostering self-esteem in Indigenous students and the way that this can affect a student's learning. The Anui article, 2015, also touched on the idea that creating trusting relationships within the classroom can dr drastically increase student engagement. Schissel and Wertherspoon state that education has badly damaged or even destroyed the lives and futures of many Aboriginal people and their communities. The video in the last lecture demonstrated the intergenerational trauma from the perspective of both older and younger generations and reminded us to be mindful of the diverse experience of each of our students. By recognizing the intergenerational trauma in our Indigenous students caused by residential schools and allowing our students to feel and express and voice their own concerns or apprehensions, we can continue, continue to better ourselves as humans as well as our teaching methods. So next we're gonna talk about looking forward. Where do we go from here and how will Indigenous education look in our classrooms? So first, just like we did, we would give land acknowledgements in our classroom. This is important in getting, to student, in getting students to think about the land that they're residing on and where it came from and its history. Next, we talked about using Indigenous pedagogy such as storytelling, land-based learning, two-eyed seeing, and talking circles. These extend the Indigenous education techniques just beyond the educational aspects or the content knowledge and stretches them into actual Indigenous pedagogies that Indigenous people use. Next, we discuss using Appendix 6, just like we did in our learning task, to critically analyze Indigenous resources used in the classroom and ensure that they're valid and useful and meaningful. Next, we talked about using strategies to increase liter literacy through storytelling. So in the Mako article, they talked about how we can use literacy to advance or help, or use storytelling to help advance the literacy of Indigenous students in our classroom. And this is because there's a lot of um, issues in regards to Indigenous students potentially learning their own language at the same time as learning English. 
And so next would be utilizing the artifacts put forth by our classmates. There's tons of amazing resources in these artifacts and we compiled a list of our own that we think would be really helpful in our future classrooms. And then finally, we discussed building relationships with Indigenous people in the community. So such as elders, um, just Indigenous members that could come into the classroom and give their own perspectives on Indigenous knowledge that we're unable to give as non-Indigenous people. And so just to wrap up, we talked about how these strategies can be used to in educate Indigenous and non-Indigenous people while also promoting the success of Indigenous students. And here's our list of references. Good luck with your practicums. We look forward to hearing how you've incorporated Indigenous education into your teaching. Thank you.